ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما اوتيتم من العلم الا قليلا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي صدق الله العظيم ما ريسبكتد برادرز اند سسترز توداي ذا ٹاپک اي هاف چوزن فور ذس ٹاک is related to our everyday life there was a reason why prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has recommended to us to read surah kahf at least every friday and when he was saying to read surah kahf there was a reason and most of the time because we have very superficial understanding of our deen we all think just reading the words of surah kahf is good enough but the purpose the ruh the spirit of the command of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was so that we can reflect on surah kahf because there are four dimensions of our life discussed in surah kahf and these are the dimensions that we deal in our everyday life does not matter what generation what time uh, what time we are living in this applies to all through our life no matter what time frame we live in so today i decided to discuss surah kahf and see how really we can get answers to our everyday life by looking at this worldly life through the glance through the lens of surah kahf you know surah kahf uh, as it is said in the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that if you read every friday it will protect you from the fitna of dajjal you know dajjal is from the word dajjal dajjal is deception and this challenge of deception we have you know all throughout the history of humanity and every generation has its own dajjal its own deception and the deception of our time the dajjal of our time is fitna of this dunya the glitter of this dunya you know the dunya has expanded so much and it has consumed us so much and we are so obsessed with this dunya that this dunya really has become a dajjal fitna hindrance between us and our true mission as a human being on this planet my brothers and my sister there are four stories discussed in surah kahf and before i will go one by one in detail of each story we have to understand these will be the four challenges when dajjal is going to come in this dunya people of that time will face these very four challenges and these four challenges if we look around in our own life and if we look at the history of humanity always we face these challenges my brothers and my sisters and one more thing which we will learn today there is a very important question we ask all the time and that question is why why allah subhanahu wa taala is doing this why is this happening to me why this is happening in the world why this is pan- there is pandemic why there is hurricane the question of why if we look through the lens of surah kahf this question will be answered very well as we go through inshallah surah kahf and the messages of surah kahf today now in journal there are two messages from surah kahf number 1 is humility humbleness aajizi 
you surrender yourself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second broader message we see in Surah Kahf is the message of patience, sabr. And a lot of time, really, we take a very limited meaning of sabr that when you are going through a trial, that is sabr. That is one meaning of the sabr. But following the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, staying firm on it, the difficulties you go through as you follow through the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the difficulty you go through when you, you stop yourself from disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, plus the consistency, the path you have taken, and you see the consistency in the life, that is patience also. My brothers and my sisters, there is another definition of sabr is contained. Whatever situation and condition Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept us or whatever status he has given me from all dimensions, from all aspects, I am contained, I am kane, I am sabir, I am happy on that. The first story of Surah Kahf is the trial of Iman. You know, pupil of cave. And this is one of the most important message from Surah Kahf that the most important thing in our life is our Iman. And whenever you will face the challenge about your Iman, you will always have two options. One option is of Azma, of Ahsan, that you follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to its rule according to its spirit, that's the highway, that's the way of azma. And there is always will be option of ruksa, that you can follow the lower way, that you can, you know, compromise according to, you know, the, the masleha, the need of the time. But, you know, people who really have the true firm iman, the people who always say Iman and they stay fast, these are the people because of them, Allah's bounties continues to shower on this planet. These are the people, they become light. They become hope for the people who are following that path. These are the people, they become reason of encouragement for so many people because they have taken the path of azma and my brothers and my sisters if you look in that story when these youngsters they chose the path of azma the ahsan and they wanted to protect their iman without compromising on their iman without hiding themselves without surrendering themselves to the will of the king. Look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom. That Allah protected them not too far away from the place they stood, you know, stayed fast in front of the king. That place was not too far from the palace of the king, from the town they were leaving that town. And on top of that, we have to understand one concept. You know, Every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this planet, in this universe, is doing tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sabbaha lillahi ma fi thamawati wa ma fi lard. They all are already doing obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If human beings also follow the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they also do what they are supposed to do then this whole universe gets synchronized with the pupil of Iman. And once our Iman gets synchronized with the rest of the universe, every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts serving the pupil of Iman. Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the sun to protect these youngsters who have slept for more or less 300 years, how to protect their body from any damage, 
how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded the wind, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded the surrounding around these people to protect these youngsters for 300 years, my brothers and my sisters. The only condition, the only condition is sincerity of the Iman. And you say, I have said Kalma la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, I have freed myself from the slavery of everybody. And I will give myself only in the slavery of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you say this Kalma and you stayed fast on this Kalma, this, whose whole universe will Allah will make serve you, come at your service, my brothers and my sisters. The second story of Surah Kahaf talks about the story of the two gardens. These were the two brothers, according to some of the tafasir, and they both have received inheritance from their diseased parents. And one of the brother, he had already given most of his wealth in charity. And the other brother, who is basically feeling proud about his wealth, and he is becoming ignorant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the message we learn from that story, my brothers and my sisters, is that whenever you have wealth, then the best way with wealth is that you, you know, humble yourself, you become shakir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you do charity. You know, when you will humble yourself, this is by default that you will become grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever you will be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about any bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will spend that bounty more in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the best outcome, the best use of the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to use those bounties in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, we don't have time to talk about the risk in detail, but wallahi, the risk is not just the wealth. Risk is all the faculties, all the bounties, all the nema. Everything Allah has provided you and me to live this life is a risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our children, our friends, you know, our body, our environment, everything is a risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the best use of that is in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for that, the lesson we learn is that we should spend that the best of it, the best of it in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third, you know, story we read in uh, Surah Kahf, that is the story that I want to spend a little bit more time. And that is the story of Hazrat Khidr and Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And that was a challenge of knowledge, ilm. The first one was Iman. The second challenge one, one was wealth. And the third challenge is challenge of knowledge, challenge of ill. My brothers and my sisters, there are many lessons we learn from the story of Hazrat Khidr and Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. We learn, you know, adab. Adab, when you approach your teacher, how you should approach your teacher. We learn that as a student, we should have a humility. Ajizi, that is the very much prerequisite for any student. And number three, we learn from that story the importance of Sohba. You know, one of the scholars was saying one time that Hazrat Musa may have asked, you know, or would have asked uh, Hazrat Khidr to that I am tired, I have just came from a long journey, why don't we just sit down? and spend some time so I can benefit from your knowledge. Hazrat Musa did not ask him to sit down and teach me the wisdom you have, the knowledge you have. Rather, he preferred to spend some time with Hazrat Khidr, Khidr And this also teaches us 
the importance of soba and especially in this time and age we live in a lot of time we want fiery speakers we want big names we are more inclined towards you know social media youtube videos to learn and of course right now we are we have some necessity of virtual program but this has become our normal routine that we can learn deen through virtual means but wallahi to learn the deen with this true spirit the traditions we see in our 1400 year scholarship is sohba the company that you spend time with the pupil of ilm and you learn not only just the knowledge not just the ilm you learn so many things while you are spending time with the teacher and and this is one of the lesson that we learn from that story the ayah which i read in the beginning of my khutba wa ma utitum min al ilmi qalila this is one of the message from this story you know when after they were finishing you know uh, this sohba this company they had hazrat khidr hazrat musa there was a bird came and picked a little drop of water from the sea and hazrat khidr said the knowledge of you and me is just that that water left on the beak of that bird and the knowledge of allah subhanahu wa taala is wide unlimited my brothers this is one of the lesson from that story that no matter what we become no matter we become phd's or md's or scientists or we go to moon or mars wa ma utitum min al ilmi illa qalila our knowledge is still very limited and for knowledge ajizi humility is must the day we become arrogant the day we become arrogant the doors of knowledge get shut on us and i have seen that in our we see it every day that people who have got little bit of knowledge you see arrogance in them they feel like they have become somebody and arrogant person can never learn because arrogant person will never ask the right question because he feel like that he already knows everything you know there is another reason that i have seen in many people and this i have learned from from the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam lot of time we show anger we show arrogance we want to make sure people understand our status people should respect us people should understand the who i am bottom line reason of those things is that we are feeling insecure from inside you know if you look at the life of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam even if somebody has come like the pupil of uh, you know uh, people of following uh, hazrat isa alaihi salam some christians they came in masjid e nabawi and they and the leader of them he disrespected prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said whatever you are saying is just all fabrication but look at the response of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he never reacted the how dear you are that you are challenging my dignity i am the prophet of allah subhanahu wa taala the reason he said to him that if you feel like that i am fabricating so let's have let's wait that for the time when time will come then you and me we both will know that who is right and who is wrong whenever he has any situation in his home he always felt secure as a man so he never you know got upset with the family members that how dear you are that you are challenging challenging my manhood so from the life of prophet sallam we learn that the people who are secure they feel secure from inside these are the people they have more humbleness they have more humility they are more they have more ajizi my respected brothers and and my sister that's why you know imam shafi 
Rahmatullah at one time said that more I acquire knowledge of this deen, more I feel that the, the knowledge the knowledge I have is very limited. More I gain the knowledge, more I feel my jihala, my ignorance. So my brothers, so people who get more knowledge and if they're really sincere, in seeking the knowledge and they are sincere that they are doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to understand this deen so they can you know apply this deen on themselves and they can help other people my brothers and my sisters these people will be more humble and somehow we see in our life that we are missing this part of our life, the, the humility, the humbleness in our life, my brothers and my sisters. The last uh, story, and before I go to the last story, this, this in the same story of Hazrat Khidr and Hazrat Musa, you know, if you see all those three incidents happen when he made a hole in the boat, he killed a young boy, and then he was raising the wall of an orphan. One of the message we learn from that story, look at Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. He is one of the Ulul Azm Ambiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the knowledge of him. And he is a Rasul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But even him asking Khidr the reason why you are you know, making hole in the boat, why have you killed that young boy? And why you are raising this wall of orphans when the people of this town has mistreated us? That tells us that there is always a wisdom in everything happening around us. And the only problem is, and because of that, we become judgmental even about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we pass judgment that why Allah subhanahu wa there is no God because if God is there, then why this is happening and why that is happening? My brothers and my sisters, the only reason is Wama ilmi qalila. The only reason is that our knowledge is very limited. We can only see, you know, so far. We cannot see what is behind the scene. We cannot understand the wisdom of everything happening around us. And that's why, you know, as a Muslim, we have to have reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everything happening around us, this is part of our iman, to have faith in taqdeer, that whatever is happening is happening with the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Mawran Maududi Rahmatullah one time had used a very good example that he said if the gardener, inter, gardener enters the garden and he starts cutting, you know, these weeds and extra, you know, plants or he's cutting the leaves or he's cutting, you know, branches to make his garden more beautiful. Mawran says if Allah provides tongue to these trees and, you know, plants, they all will complain to gardener that why are you doing this? But the gardener knows what is needed for the beauty of his garden. My brothers and my sisters, that's why as a faithful person, the more we have iman, longing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more we have this faith that whatever goes around me is good for me. The last story which is Zul Karnan story and that is the story of power that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides somebody power his attitude should be serving the humanity you know what I extract from this story you know that this dimension of our life the power we all have power one way or the other an important thing is that how you and me are utilizing that power. The excellence 
the excellence the ihsan when allah gives you any power is to facilitate the lives of the people around you to make the life of the people around you happy and easy so it's not that when you have you become president of the country no when you are head of the house when you are in charge of a department when you are in charge of any halaqa that you become such a pleasant personality you go extra mile to help out people around you and wallahi if we all adopt just this quality that as a momin whatever authority allah has given me at my home at my work or in community or in organization or as a employee then i will make sure that i will facilitate i will pave the path of ease for the people around me so if i conclude by saying this the surah kahf is basically teaches you and me my brothers and sisters lesson how to live our everyday life and these are the four dimensions of our life that we face challenge in all ages and in, in throughout the history and these will be the challenges up until end of the time the challenge to our iman then what should be our priority we have the the rukhsa but the people of dignity they take the path of azma the path of ihsan when when you and then you have the challenge challenge of wealth when allah gives you wealth you becomes more humble you become more shakir to allah subhanahu wa taala you show more gratitude and then you utilize that wealth in the path of allah subhanahu wa taala when allah subhanahu wa taala opens up doors of knowledge for you then the uh, the prerequisite of knowledge is humility humbleness and more you will be humble this knowledge will continue to shower in your life the mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala and if allah subhanahu wa taala has given you and me power in any capacity then you and me we will make sure that we pave the path of rahma pave the path of ease facilitate the life of the people around us so we will become the merciful for the people around us my brothers and my sisters i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that he give you and me tawfiq that we live this life according to the teachings of our beautiful deen our beautiful deen you know the only thing we we are missing is that we are not paying attention and we really if we try to understand the spirit the ruh the bottom line message of the saying of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the message from quran then our life will be happy life and the life of the people around us will become happy and our ending will be happy and then we will be raised again on the day of judgment inshallah we will hear from allah subhanahu wa taala ya ayyatuha nafsul mutmainna irji'i ila rabbika radiyatan mardiya fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh allahu akbar